welcome to Bharata First. You're watching the discourse with me, Frank Razum Pereira. Since you're here, I have a humble request. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and share the content so that more people get to know about Bharata First. That's it. Nothing more. Well, we also have a YouTube membership program with some great perks. Do check them out under the join button and join now. And finally, do contribute to keep our content alive. The link is in the description below. Once again, I would like to thank Ganadar Rao for your contribution. It really helps us in a big way. So please contribute as much as you can because that really helps us. Now on to the discussion. The police chief of Haryana's NU, Varun Singla, where communal clashes broke out on Monday, has been transferred to the state's Bhivani district around 160 kilometers away. He was on leave when the clashes broke out. Six people, including two home guards and a cleric, have died in the clashes that erupted in Nu over an attempt to stop a Vishwa Hindu Parishad procession and spread to Gurgaon over the past few days. Several vehicles, food joints and shops were set on fire by unruly mobs. Before the violence in their social media posts and meetings with the administration, civil society members also alerted the government to take cognizance of the build-up and to take cognizance of the fact that violence could break out at any point in time. But the Haryana administration did not respond. Haryana's intelligence department had prior inputs on the possibilities of violence in Nu and Gurugram, but the state administration did not deploy an adequate number of cops to avoid the violence. In this edition of the discourse, we will analyze the Haryana communal clashes in detail and take a closer look at what went wrong in the state. With me are some stellar guests. Joining me on the program today are Yashovardhan Azad, retired IPS, former Secretary, Security Government of India and presently Chairman and Co-Founder Deep Strat. Also with me, Dr. Vikram Singh, former Director General of Police, Uttar Pradesh, and Mr. S.K. Sood, former Additional Director General of the Border Security Force. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of the discourse. Dr. Singh, viewers have been eagerly waiting for you, and I've got several comments and several requests in the recent past that, you know, uh, we want to see Dr. Vikram Singh, so here we have him. Uh, let me start with you first. Uh, you know, how would you look back at the communal clashes in Haryana? What went wrong? Frank and distinguished colleagues, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity for this to brainstorm and see what we could have done better. I have the greatest of respect for the Haryana police and all my colleagues. And before I'm accused of reminiscing and living in the past and injecting wisdom post retirement, I would say that this is just not the way to handle such a sensitive situation. Things were on the boil from 20th of July. 20th of July, and we had the so-called social media influencers working overtime. Bittu Bajrangi, Monu Manesar, Asad Pakistani, and the whole lot of them. We have a social media platform in the police also, and the social media monitoring cells. Are we not aware? <laughs> And the wonder of wonders, I never saw an SO saying I did not have advanced intelligence. It is for the chief minister and the home ministers to say that I did not have advanced intelligence. Every police station in the country has five documents. Tam Pradayik Sutta Register, Tam Pradayik Gunda Register, Active List, Aparad Register and Teohar Register. These documents and others incorporate all actionable intelligence and all the disturbances that have happened in the documented history in the past the troublemakers and what needs to be done in the future. Did we even take care even to look at these documents? I have my reservations because the unescorted and the unplanned manner in which the Shobha Yatra went, it was almost a free for all after that. A permission was given and when the permission is given, then we jolly well sanitize the established route. We did not sanitize. There was firing from vantageous position in the Aravalli Hills who took up positions Mr. Azad and Mr. Sood will enlighten me. Not a single preventive arrest, not a single recovery of a contraband firearm, not a single deposit 
of a licensed firearm. No arrest under 151 CRPC, no action under preve preventive action of 107 and 116 of the CRPC. We were actually quoting a recipe of disaster. Here was one situation that was second only to that of Manipur. The battle lines were drawn. The battle cries were given 11 days in advance. And what were we doing? We woke up after the incidents. Today, I'm told, Frank, that the bulldozers are there. And the bulldozers are there demolishing houses and hutments. I wish 1% of this was done on 20th of July. And on 30th, 30th of July, things would have been very different today. Was there any roof to top survey? We have the drone technology. Even today, we do not have the survey of the Aravalli Hills by the drone technology. We have the technology of big data analytics. No, in any case, is the epicenter of cybercrime in the country. Did we take pains to identify the suspect SIM cards and the suspect mobile phones using fake IMEI numbers? No, we did not. Now is the wake-up call. During the course of our interaction, I'll suggest what we need to do as far as technology is concerned. Upgrade our prowess in field craft and taxis. Concealment and camouflaging. I would say the assailants had a better knowledge of concealment and camouflaging than we in the police. I'm sorry for my harsh words, gentlemen. Absolutely. I mean, very, very rightly said, uh, Dr. Singh calling a spade a spade. And unfortunately, that is the situation on the ground. Uh, Mr. Sooth, let me build on the points that uh, Dr. Singh has just made and try to take them forward with you. Do you feel that this could have all been prevented and this was let to happen? I am in total agreement with what Dr. Vikram Singh has said. This could have been prevented. My first question is, what was the occasion for this Shobha Yatra on 30th of July? There was no occasion. I can understand if there was a major festival around for which some Shobha Yatra has been allowed. I can understand that. But what was the major occasion at this point of time? And number two, as uh, the, the Minister of State, uh, Dr. Inderjeet, Rao Inderjeet Singh has said, how come these weapons are allowed in Shobha Yatra? Who carries them? Why doesn't police stop that kind of thing why doesn't police stop uh, those, those sloganering? And why do we have to go to Muslim areas to show our uh, uh, bravery and all that? This is a pattern that is being adopted by these militant organizations. I would term Bajrang, Bajrang Dal and VHP as militant organization. This is a pattern that is being followed by them to instigate trouble everywhere in the country. It happened on the Ram Naomi occasion in uh, New Delhi. It happened now. It will happen in future. So uh, police bandabas should have been there. As, as has been said, the intelligence was available since 20th of July. The social media platform were full of that kind of information. Preventive measures should have been taken. Police should have been alerted. I am told the SP was also not there present on that particular day. Now you change the SP and uh, try to uh, sort of uh, whitewash the things. How can that, that be allowed to happen? Everyone down the line is involved in instigating this kind of problem. And in my opinion, uh, it can be said to be a political statement. It is a... Uh, it is it is a sort of preparation for uh, future. Uh, it it is a it is a pre preparation to sort of uh, create a bigger hiatus between two communities so that a particular political party can benefit from them. Police has failed in its duty. The politicians have failed in their duty to uh, stop that kind of violence, and I am sure it could have been avoided uh, without it. Okay, this is part of a bigger plan and it was done deliberately is what Mr. Sood is suggesting because of political gains. Uh, Mr. Razad, I'd like to bring you into the picture now. Uh, you know, we've spoken about preventive steps and how, you know, preventive measures could have been taken to stop what happened in Haryana. But let's not forget that the violence also spread like wildfire. I mean, it started in Nu and then it went on and it almost reached the national capital. Uh, what could have been done to prevent that from happening? 
well let me say at the very outset uh, that while there are glaring uh, lapses in the action uh, taken by the district administration i think all three sides are culpable uh, number one uh, there's no doubt that uh, vhp when they planned this yatra and the moment there is a gentleman who's well he's not named in the fir so i can't call him uh, 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 I can just call him an accused, that is Monu Manisar and Bitu Vajrangi. The moment they took out that appeal on the social media for people to participate and they would sell, they themselves would be leading. I think uh, the VHP should have completely denied uh, their, their participation because if you have a religious yatra, you don't have such people uh, coming there. That's number one. But number two, it was incumbent upon the district administration to, to find this man and hand over to the Rajasthan police because he's, uh, uh, he's an accused, uh, not named, of course, but he should be there for questioning. So that was also uh, missed. I don't think it was a failure of intelligence at all because, you know, whenever you plan a route, and especially at this particular point of time, uh, as Dr. Vikram Singh would support me, that we in the district administration, we are so careful about any kind of a yatra. Number one, uh, we plan the route. It can go through anywhere, through a mosque or anything, but no threatening postures, no uh, carriage of arms, no dangerous slogans, and no intimidating gestures or slogans. Now, I don't know whether this was done. Mamta Singh, the ADG law and order said that we had gone through all the drills, well, if you went through all the drills, then how were they carrying arms? That's number one. And number two, uh, the most important thing is, Frank, that when all this happens, then at the point of conflagration, in any communal situation, you have to be decisive, you have to be brutal, and you have to to commit an action which creates an impact, which was not done. So what was happening was the other side was very well prepared. They had planned for a long time. That, that is why they were, they were uh, you know, firing from the hills. They had stones on top of uh, the, these places. And when the stone throwing started, in fact, the district administration should have told them that we have made all the arrangements and you will not create any trouble if you do we will take very decisive action. The problem was both sides were firing while the unarmed police was watching very helplessly. Now, the second thing what has happened is that in, any, in, a, in an eventual situation of this kind of a conflagration, cyclical reactions are bound to take place. Whenever one community is strong in a particular area, it takes out its arms and reprisals against the other. The other thing which is very noticeable in such communal rights is that the attacks inevitably come against commercial establishments that is on restaurants that is on shops that is on on various business establishments and my heart goes out to people from my state bihar and also up because they are always affected and you know the poor market migrants were asked by their landlords to just get out and so they are home and they have lost everything the second the last point which i want to make is that what has happened now is when this kind of a, a conflagration spreads and, you know, people get engulfed in it, then there are religious places which are attacked, which sort of create a many sided rumors that this has happened in a particular area. So you have a reaction going on in Palwal, Sona, Faridabad and Bagheera and, and Gurugram. And the saddest thing, uh, Frank, is that there were industries coming in Mewad. There are, there are multinationals which are planned for the development of this place. And we had 100 vehicles burnt. We had establishments destroyed. And there will be a think amongst the MCs now that, you know, a place like Haryana, which is a place for foreign investment, um, in, 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 a state, in a city like Gurgaon, you have flag marches. That's, that's really unfortunate. So I think it is, it is the, all the sides are culpable. And it's really unfortunate that this has happened, which should have been prevented. Absolutely. We are portraying a picture of, uh, you know, of peace, of, of being a developing country, of trying to bring in investments, especially to MNCs and to investors from around the world. And then you have something like this happening in one of our biggest, uh, you know, so to speak, uh, MNC hub in the country that is truly 
unfortunate and not the right kind of message to send out. Dr. Singh, let me bring you back into the picture, you know, and let's try and understand one more aspect, you know. What are some of the biggest challenges, really, as far as the police force is concerned on the ground when dealing with issues like this? Because we, as Mr. Razad just pointed out, the situation very quickly got out of hand as well. There was stone pelting, weapons being carried, and so on and so forth. In such a kind of a situation, what is the protocol for the police to follow? Or is there anything that the police can actually do to contain the situation? Obviously, Frank, as Napoleon had said, no guardian angel comes to guide me in my battle. I have a backup plan for a backup plan for a backup plan. And I apply my mind to the worst case scenario and cater to that contingency. It is not that I say, Ye kya jaga hai, dosto. no, it doesn't work like that. There is a district contingency plan and Zilla Danga Niyantrad Yojana which every district of the country has, and that has to be rehearsed. I do hope, as Mr. Azad had said, and Mr. Sood also had mentioned, that they had rehearsed the district contingency plans. Had the contingency plan been revised, the attack on the cyber police station could have been avoided. And if one had the audacity to attack, they would have been repulsed and got a befitting reply. To the contrary, what I see that there was no befitting reply. And in such a riotous situation, the first response, I'll be very frank with you, that it is very unnerving to see big bats and bullets flying across. And those who have not been privy and those who have not faced such a situation, indeed, it can be very, very challenging and demanding. We may have simulation exercise, but the real baptism of fire comes only when one is face to face in a riotous situation. The challenge below the police is to improve and ensure and reinforce the morale of the force to ensure that the riot is not going to subside in the next 48 hours. Get the backup reinforcements, arms, ammunition, and the backup support because the force is going to tire out in the next 12 hours. Who to replenish after 12 hours? Then the food and the other logistic arrangements for the force there. And also a backup plan to identify those taking sniper shots from the Arabi Hills, how to neutralize them. And ensure that there is no danger to life and property. What has been done needs to be not nipped in the bud, but crushed in the bud. The firefighting mechanism, the hospital and the injured, the strong, I would like to say, in many writer situations, even you could feel the panic in the voice of those on the RT set. Those on the RT set should give the impression that they are men and women of steel and not panicking. Okay. Injured ka kya hua? The injured is the police colloquial for the injured. Unka injured ko kis hospital mein bheja, unka jaha par ladies ko bheja. So the colloquialism that increased, so very welcome, but there should not be a hint of panic, the quivering of the voice of the wireless operators and the police leadership. And the day the police leader says, Bhagwan chahega to sab thik ho jayega, to Bhagwan to jab chahega, tab chahega, aap kya chahte hain? What kind of leadership are you providing if you say Bhagwan jab chahega to ho jayega? Are you not prepared? Are you not equal to the task? The police leadership have a job to perform. They should know like the back of their palm every inch of the area and ensure area domination before the procession even assembles. Ensure that the area domination is catered for and they should have a generation advantage as far as field crop tactics and battle prowess are concerned. It is not that the assailants are there atop at a vantage position and we are like sitting ducks. Therefore, the action plan, the Danga Niyantran Yojana, the right control drill, and the use of minimum force, not to be carried away by sentiment spray. It is so easy to say, you fired one and one brick bat on my head and I start bleeding. Then I put the AK-47 in automatic mode and put out a burst of fire and any man, woman or child coming my way and kill all the bystanders and those who are just not related to the disturbance in any way. Those sitting in the balcony, those sitting in the market. Therefore, a mature leadership, battle ready, professionally competent, and an unbiased police force is what we require today. Absolutely. Very well said, Dr. Singh. And I really hope that's the direction that we move in because that's the kind of police force that India needs. And that is what is going to ensure that we achieve our dreams when we become 100. All right. Uh, Mr. Sooth, coming back to you now, you know, uh, Dr. Singh was mentioning reinforcements, talking about reinforcements. The Chief Minister of Haryana has said that, you know, he needs additional forces to be sent from the centre. Is this a classic case for additional forces uh, from the centre being sent to Haryana? See, uh, 
at present stage, I think it is the, the additional forces are required uh, to be deployed in order to control the situation because situation obviously has gone out of the control of police. And it is not because of ineff inefficiency of police. Uh, let me very humbly put it across. Police were not a helpless, uh, police were not as helpless as they sound to be. I have come across videos where police is helping the writers actively. This has happened here in Haryana. This has, hap this has happened in Delhi also. So my, my point is that the situation can at this stage be controlled only by the central paramilitary forces who come from outside, who are mostly unbiased, number one. Number two, we, uh, in so far as uh, future, future uh, is concerned, how to avoid these, I am in totally total agreement with Dr. Vikram Singh. There are contingency plans which should be practiced, which should, which, which everyone should know what are the what are those contingency plans. And number uh, and, and next point is that police in our our uh, scenario, especially in the in the northern states, has become totally communalized and politicized. At least politicized, if not communalized. This was visible here. This was visible in uh, in the Delhi riot uh, three years ago. So we need to ensure that these aspects are covered adequately in the police training. I mean, we are presently deploying, uh, elect, selecting police from within the state. Is it not not a time to consider that police should be uh, should not be localized. Police should uh, policemen, when recruited, should be deployed in other states so that they don't have a stake. The police locally, locally deployed has a stake in it because they have to live in the society. They they hesitate to act against their own. So that all those issues must be considered and leadership. Leadership uh, with with due uh, due respects to uh, the the colleagues on the panel and. And, uh, with, uh, and, I, and, and I must must say that they have been outstanding policemen and they are an exception. The police leadership, as it goes higher, loses its, uh, I mean, I mean, not, I, I wouldn't say loses its uh, impartiality. It becomes very flexible and amenable to political directions. This has been happening more often now than it was happening previously. This has been happening more often now for last, a uh, couple of decades. So we need an impartial police. We need uh, impartial leadership uh, amongst the police. And we also need to plan contin uh, contingency planning to control these kind of situations. Uh, we we in, in border security force, in border guarding during wartime, we have contingency plans which on, on which we keep working during our, during our peacetime uh, deployment in, uh, in those areas. And decision making has to be uh, very, very quick. I find the police deployed on NACAs, on uh, traffic centers, very decisive, very quick. But I, I wonder what happens to them when they are faced with these kind of situations. Either they are not, not trained for these kind of situations or they are not willing to take decisions in these. The local commanders should be empowered to take quick uh, decisions in in the required time frame, whether Absolutely. to use force or not, it, it, it he should not be looking back at his his leaders to get directions. Ke bhai, ab ye ho gaya, ab main kya karu? He should be able to take a decision. Of course, keeping the law in in mind, the 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 use of minimum force, etc. Those principles uh, have, have to be kept in mind. But riotous situations have to be come have to be controlled. We cannot have destruction of property uh, and destruction and, and loss of life in such a wanton manner. Sure. So police needs to introspect. Our politicians need to introspect so that they don't interfere in, in, in the police work. And our population needs to understand that we are the same people. Very we, true. We cannot, we cannot live separately. We are, uh, partition happened for, in 47. 
there, there was a separate majority area for Muslims to go. They, they went there. But Points now, taken. Those who are here are, are going to be here and they have to be integrated into our uh, system, into our society. Absolutely. That, that's what I wish to say. Absolutely. Mr. Azad, let me bring in another uh, perspective into the picture. You know, you, you mentioned the social media in your opening remarks. Uh, the role of social media and the kind of challenges that it uh, poses during times like these? And is the police force equipped enough to handle these new age challenges? That's a very good point, Frank, because, you know, uh, this, these are all part of a new age policing, as I, uh, as I would say. New age uh, policing uh, looks into a whole gamut of uh, things which are which are coming up, whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's, um, uh, you know, whether it's virtual management of, of social media to everything, you know, the metadata and, and things like that, whether it's encryption. So that's why you have a whole lot of a new debate which, which is coming up. What should we do about uh, encrypted data, for example? Mm. And the police wants a backdoor to the, to the encryption. So in a democracy, you have to take a decision that whether would you like to have a backdoor policy for two cases of crimes, very serious crimes or terrorism, and then make the entire data architecture weak for lakhs and lakhs of people who are having safe communication on the WhatsApp or something. So this is a serious issue. For example, the police and the intelligence agencies say that we want to crack the codes of this uh, you know, new age terrorism because they are, they are only using Telegram, they are only using WhatsApp. So a thing of this kind is something which is still debatable and jury is still out in the open. But as far as the use of social media is concerned, of course, there, is, there, is, um, um, there are two things. One is, of course, that it immediately needs an attention of the police authorities. Because today, social media, the way it is being used, mostly recklessly by the looping elements. And look at the, look at the example even the Supreme Court has today asked about monitoring of hate speeches and they say that it should be it should be televised so that you have it on record so everything comes to about new age policing and how you're tackling it now as far as the the facilities are concerned uh, the infrastructure is concerned of course police is gearing up to it but as far as the basic level is concerned say of hate speeches definitely it can be monitored as far as the social media uh, is, is, is used by goons um, who, are, who are spreading reckless and irresponsible messages, I think police should act like it should have acted immediately in the case of uh, Monu Pahelwan because it, because it did bring a counter reaction uh, from even the Congress MLA of, of that particular area, if you remember, and he, he spoke at the assembly. So when this kind of an exchange of ideas, so-called, were going on on the social media platforms, it was incumbent upon the district uh, uh, authorities to step in. And as Dr. Vikram Singh said, that is where the police comes in regarding the preventive arrests and opening their Gunda register and, and you know, VCNBs to see which are these Sajaya Aftas, which are these, you know, elements which can create trouble. So, yes, what I would say is that new age policing has brought in a lot of demand and police to up to it. So the entire, you know, the tactical way of approaching crimes has to be a little different. And the unwanted elements of NU, in fact, attacked the police stations because Haryana ISP had done a great job because the center of online frauds has shifted from Jharkhand to NU. Therefore, in a communal conflagration of this kind, various kinds of unwanted elements get in. And that's why we have to have a much, much wider sweep than in our police. Okay, we seem to have lost the line there with Mr. Azad, but uh, no worries, we'll take the discussion forward. Uh, Dr. Singh, it's time to get closing comments now from my panelists with the best way forward and what next, starting first with you. Frank, just three quick points. One, what worked yesterday will not work today. The police will have to have the next generation of policing, and that would include futuristic 
technologies like AI, machine learning, robotics, and drone technology. Had we had them in position, we would come out much better. And leadership is a skill that is also, there are born leaders and leaders are mentored and made. To Mr. Sood, I would say there are black sheep everywhere. There cannot be a single organization which can claim to be all angels and no devils. Likewise, the police leadership, I see, is second to none when it comes to being exemplary in pain, sacrifice and effort. But yes, every day is a new day and every day is a process of learning. And to that extent, Frank, I feel that we need to put our best foot forward. And the one line that we need to have is we belong to everyone and everyone belongs to us. Thank you. Very beautifully said, uh, Dr. Singh. It is indeed true. And uh, taking the discussion forward, Mr. Sood, uh, your quick closing comments. See, uh, what I wish to say is that since 1965, when Haryana became an independent state, it has been the most peaceful state in, in the northern mm -hmm. India. And it has been the most progressive state in northern India. This is the first time in my memory that we have seen such kind of riotous things. And Mewat, new area especially, has been known for uh, the, the, the bonhomie and friendship between different communities. They, they are not uh, what, what we call them, Qatar Hindus or Qatar Muslims. So this kind of thing should not have happened. And government must take all steps to control such things happening in future. Uh, otherwise, Haryana, is, uh, which, which has so far uh, led the uh, Indian economy from the front, is uh, then, then going to lose its place in the uh, committee of states within the country. Right. And Mr. Azad, your closing comments on the program. Very quick three points. Uh, number one, I think it is about time that the political executive stops patronizing locals. Because in the long term, it's really, really, uh, 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 you know, a losing game. It's no longer advantageous to get a fetch a few votes here and there and sell the state because the people have become very, very perceptive. Today, the demand is development and nothing else. Number two, the police really has to gear up to the demands of new age policing. And the entire infrastructure has to be prepared for that. And the deployment has to be done for that. And lastly, whenever there is a communal conflagration, the police has to be brutally hard on the rioters so that it's nipped in the bud. Otherwise, the cyclical reactions go on. And you, we have seen examples, whenever it is stopped right there, it doesn't progress anything beyond that. That's a lesson. Absolutely. All right. Gentlemen, we'll have to leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us and sharing your expert views on this very sensitive issue. Much appreciate your time. Thank you. So what's coming out of this discussion is that the violence in Haryana could have been avoided if preventive action was taken by the administration. There was intelligence which clearly stated that something was brewing, but the authorities let it pass. Violence like this taking place in a global economic hub doesn't bode well for India and we should crush such incidents in the bud to keep the investor morale high. The violence began and spread due to complacency of uh, the police force, administration and political class. So all three of them are to blame. That is what is worrying. There are SOPs to be followed in such situations which weren't and hence things got out of hand. What we need going forward is a police force that is unbiased and free from political interference. A police force which has a spine. The police leadership also needs to step in situations like this or rather step up in situations like this and ensure that nothing goes wrong and they perform the primary duty of keeping our citizens safe and maintaining law and order. Well, that's it in this edition of The Discourse. And since you've made it here, I would remind you to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and share the content as well so that more people get to know about Bharata First. We also have a YouTube membership program with some great perks. Do check it out under the Join button and join now. And finally, do contribute to keep our content alive. The link is in the description below. A small contribution that you make will go a long way in us keeping our content alive. 
Once again, I would like to thank Ganadara Rao for your contribution. Thank you very much. Until next time, this is Frank Rausen Pereira signing off. Thank you.